Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex Gomez and on today's video I'm going to take you step by step on how to light a characters. Something that I have learned in my uh, 17 years of trade as a lighting artist. So I want to share these techniques with you so make sure you stick until the end of the video if you want to learn how to light your characters a proper way. One thing, you can use these techniques in Blender, Cinema 4D, 3D Studio Max, Maya, whatever. This is like a all general techniques. So stick till the end, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and stick until the end of the video. I promise you, you're gonna learn a lot here. So let's get started, guys. Okay, so one of the principles that I do when I do lighting, I do a technique that is called three-point lighting, which means I have a key light, that is the, my main light. I have a fill light that is going to give a little bit of a fill, normally it's, uh, from one side to the character, let's say like uh, around this area. My key light is always like a almost kind of like a diagonal going on top, like this kind of is on the side from the camera and I have a rim light. The rim light is the one that is going to separate my character from the background. Okay, so uh, for this uh, video I'm using Redshift. You can use whatever uh, software you want to use or render engine. But uh, for me, like I what I do mostly is Redshift. It's, it's amazing. I just love it because it has a really, really good uh, <laughs> render time so like a 1080 by 1080 I can just get a render for example 20 seconds in a really good resolution okay so let's let's get going I'm gonna start uh, for uh, creating a camera you can you guys can create your, your own camera in your software so I'm gonna adjust my camera the way that I want it okay so pretty much I want like a front view of my character First, uh, I'm gonna, like imagine I can show my my um, uh, resolution gate. So I know which one is the resolution. I already have 1080 by 1080. And I'm gonna put my character as I think it should be. Right now, the focal length is 35. And I normally use for characters between 80, 75, 80, 100, depends. Because like, when I see when a focal length is low, is very, uh, low like like this value uh, the kind of like face tends to deform a little bit if I go for example to 78 the face it gets a little bit more flat and the higher it go the flatter it gets so the lower you go like a more kind of like a fish eye effect kind of gives but uh, I normally do like I'm just gonna go like a with 100 for this one for this case and I'm just gonna take my my um, my camera just probably around there I think is good then I'm just gonna lock my camera or whatever you can use uh, in, in you guys software I'm gonna start the lighting so first I'm gonna create my first light my first light is gonna be a key light so I'm gonna create a light I normally work with area lights so you are gonna see me the whole time I'm just gonna create in, no, uh, area lights for these cases I don't like to sometimes there's like a spotlights I don't like to use them area lights are my best friends so I'm gonna create an area light right here and as I say I'm gonna move it up and then I'm going to rotate it almost like 45 degrees and going down to my character so I'm going to start an IPR render, so I'm going to see what my lighting is doing, okay? So I'm just going to um, select my window, and I'm going to create my IPR rendering here. Let's see, and you see how fast this redshift is. Okay, so I have my IPR rendering. I already have the textures and everything set up, it's because uh, another time I'm going to show you how to set up textures. I think I have another video, you can check it out. Um, in my one of my playlists and uh, you can see how to set up all the texture workflow and lights okay so i have my key light and i'm just gonna put it diagonal a little bit more kind of like get a little bit closer i want a little bit more of a of a, um like that diagonal so it gets a little bit of a shadow right here this is what i'm looking for and this part i find like a little nice having a little shadow in there 
but I'm just gonna move it a little bit in the side, maybe right here on the shell a little bit closer, no in the eye, let's see. It's much better, go up, and this is what I'm looking for, this part. Okay, so after that, simple, eh? No, that's simple, but still we're gonna be tweaking the lights. I'm gonna create a, a secondary light, and that light is gonna be my field light. So I'm just gonna go to my redshift lights or whatever software you're using and you create a secondary light. And that light is gonna be right to the side of the character, okay? So just uh, rotate your light. Like for example, this is too much. This is like a too, too much. Like in, in some softwares you can play with the normal eyes of the lights. Like uh, if uh, bigger is your light, the more intensity is gonna get. The smaller, le less intensity. But you can get rid of that in, in, in some of the rendering plugins. But in this case, I'm just going to play with the intensity. Like, as of right now, this one, uh, my, my key light and my field light has the same intensity. And I don't want that because this one is way closer. So I'm going to drop that one probably around to 20, I will say. Probably get it like almost like an 80% less. So it's filling out this. I still have in my nice shell but it's filling out that area. And the problem that I see here now, is there is kind of like a light coming through that I don't like from probably like this part. So I'm gonna fix that. So I'm just gonna start like a fixing things that I don't like. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit and then I still have my light right there. And that's looking a little bit better. Probably I should just get a little bit more in front and get it. This is kind of like a studio lighting. If you see like a like a photographic uh, or a shot, you know, like a, for the malls and stuff like that, they use like three point lighting. They use like a field light, a kill light, and a rim light. Okay. So now like my character is getting is getting what I wanted to get. Probably I'm gonna get this a li even lower. Probably gonna go with 15. And this one I'm gonna get a little lower, probably to 80. Still feel like it is too much. And th then I'm gonna adjust a little bit more, okay? Until I get the, the proper balance between the two of them. And now I'm gonna create another light. And that's gonna be my rim light, okay? So I'm just gonna create a light. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna rotate this and Let's put it up. You see, you can see my light sometimes in, in some of the packages, Redshift, that now it's in Blender as well. And uh, you can just disable the visibility, you can turn it off, so you're not gonna see it in your render scene. So you can see my rim light right there. I can kind of like, I want to break this part out of the, the character. And, and the intensity, I normally leave it in 100. As you can see around the shoulder, this is what, what is going to break my character from, from the background. And let's put it up a little bit. So the, this is the rim light. This is what, what the rim light does. And right now it's super, super, super intense. Super, super intense. But I'm just going to go a little bit closer. And probably go a little bit down like that. Instead. So I can get like a more of this part brighter that's what I'm looking for this part here these bright parts it doesn't have to be like a like total pure white in this side but just uh, brighter enough that, that it breaks from the background okay so normally when I do a setup of lighting sometimes uh, people do a drop like that or uh, put like a uh, two planes like I have a plane here so the plane what it does is just gonna get the light it's gonna catch the light and the light is gonna bounce. So it's gonna make my, it's gonna illuminate my character all the way, like all these parts uh, from, from, the, from the bottom. So if I turn, turn this off, you're gonna see that, that this part is gonna get darker right there. You can see how, you see how dark it gets right here. But if I turn it on, like look at the difference. It's gonna get a little bit brighter. Because all, all, all the lightings are, are bouncing. And if you change the color of this material, it's going to affect as well this. Okay, so uh, keep going with my with my lighting. 
there's another technique that I like to do. I think like a little bit happy with the way it's looking. And definitely there's another technique that I like to do. I'm just gonna move this one a little bit more. Let's see, probably around here and around there. And I think I like this better. And let's keep this one closer. I just don't like how this looks like that. I'm just gonna go with object mode. And let's get this closer, but this in this area better. Around there. Because I want this shell right here. This is what I want, this shell right there. So kind of like it breaks a little bit. Okay. So now the technique that I was telling you. So besides this, I use another technique. Not technique, but I, 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 I use the help of a lot another light. And that's uh, an ambient light a dome light or using a HDRI. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna create now. But that HDRI has to be very subtle. It doesn't have to be like something really strong because if you see the exposure on mine is in zero, just like a plain straight HDRI. So that's gonna bright everything up and it's gonna kill all the nice contrast that I have with my other lights. So I have my HDRI, but this is like too much. So probably I just start like playing with value cells, minus one in the exposure. So you see it gets a little bit darker, minus two. And that's what I want probably, around minus two. Because it's still, it's kind of like bouncing and, and, and it's uh, illuminating more of my character. It's kind of like giving, a, giving it a little bit more of a life, but it's not like a over lighting it. So it's a good technique. So you can see the difference right here if I turn it on and off. Look how dark it gets. But when I turn it on, it kind of like, it, it, it brings, it, it makes it, the character a little bit, it, it punches it out more. So it gives you, it gives it more, um, like a, a little bit of, of brightness. And, and I think it's nice to have that. But the only, the other thing is like, I, I don't use it just like plain. I normally apply a map. And if you want to apply like HDR, HDRI maps, I totally recommend uh, HDRI Heaven. It's a really useful um, a website. They have tons, tons, tons of free HDRIs. And if you guys can um, get your hands uh, with some of those HDRI, totally recommend that they're free. And if you guys can support those guys, it will be nice as well because they're, what are they doing? Like taking those HDRIs are amazing. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go and look for the HDRI. Normally, I do something that is not oversaturated, that you have like a really huge, huge, um, like, like a huge sun, like something like, a, let's say, like a huge white spot like that, or uh, let's see that there's some other ones that are like, this is gonna like uh, put a lot of, a lot of intensity on my, on my render. So I'm looking for something more subtle something more subtle, kind of, it could be an interior or an overcast, because I just want a little bit of that diffuse going everywhere. So uh, there is one that I really like, and I use it all the time, and this is this one, Shadow Flats. And it's not as bright, but it's a lot of gray, so kind of like it gives a good tone. So let's try it out, and you're gonna see the difference. Okay, so there you go. So it gives it, it gives a really good tone. It gives a really good tone this HDRI. So if you want to compare the difference between the HDRI or not, let's see. So I'm just gonna do a quick render here, but it won't take that long, hopefully. And then I'm going to. It's taking a while. Let's go. Okay, I'm just gonna pause the video until it finishes rendering. Uh, one, one. Okay, there you go. So I have this one is with HDRI, and now you're gonna see the difference. So let's uh, save this image and just render it out without the HDRI. I just want you guys to see like the difference, and 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 it it, it, it definitely brings a lot. So let's do a quick render. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna put it back when when the render is done. Okay, so the render is done here. I'm gonna save this image. And then you're gonna see 
This is with the HDRI, who, look how much brighter, but it's not killing your other lights because I have the exposure, like the intensity, like lower. So the exposure of the HDRI is minus two, so it's not exposing as much light to it. And this is without it. So I think it looks kind of like, a, it, it, it brings a lot to your character. Like a lot of people just use HDRI and they just throw an HDRI and that's done. But you know, like you, you put so much work to your characters that you want a, a good light for them as well, you know? So I hope that these techniques really help you a lot. So there you go, HDRI, no, HDRI. And look how nice it looks with the HDRI. So I totally recommend that you guys use this technique, like adding a, uh, an, an environment light or a, or a dome light to your renders. So another way to separate, sometimes like, like people just render the character and, and put the background in, in Photoshop. I do it sometimes, but, but I want to, to get a little bit of a light right in the back just to, just to kind of like a, make the focus more on her face. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna create another light. I'm just gonna create a, an area light and that's what I always use, area lights. Area lights and I'm gonna convert this one into a disc. So I'm just gonna start my IPR rendering again. Uh, I'm gonna change the rectangle to a disc. I'm gonna turn it off so it, it's not visible. It's still lighting, but it's not visible. And I'm gonna make it closer, closer, closer to my background. And you see how it's illuminating this part. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a cheat that I'm doing, but it's a, re a good cheat so you can get a nice focus on your character. Let's do it a little bit bigger. And let's bring it down. Probably around there. And I think that's looking much better. And let's turn this back on <laughs> because I turned it off for the render before. So let's see, I'm just gonna do a render and pause the video and do it again. Okay, so we have here our character all lit up and all rendered and ready to post it on our station, Instagram or whatever social media you like to post it or print it if you guys want to print it. But uh, yeah, those ones are the techniques I use. Those ones are the techniques that I've been using for a long time. As I said before, I'm a lighting artist for a long, for like uh, since 2006. So uh, besides lighting, I love modeling and sculpting as well. So something that I really enjoyed a lot. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this video. If you have any questions, just please DM me, contact me on Instagram. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for sticking until the end of the video. And please subscribe, comment, like the video, share the video with your friends, with aspiring 3D artists or someone that is struggling with lighting. And I hope uh, you guys learned a lot today and see you next week. I'm probably gonna go back with another sculpting video and don't forget to check my other two videos that I have, okay? So take care guys and have an amazing weekend. See you next time.